strong arm, inexperience. So that's kind of where we're at right now, uh, looking for, you know, for somebody to take it and run with it. Uh, they both do some good things, and they both have some areas that they need to improve in. I was going to say, is it just a matter of kind of which one's going to rise to the occasion first, or is there really missing pieces that each has that maybe the other doesn't? Well, I, I think that anybody that's played the game it may, might have missing pieces, but I don't see it that way. I see it more as um, somebody getting comfortable in our system and being able to distribute the ball to the players that can make and score points and then do it effectively and not turn it over. That's saying a lot, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, whichever one it ends up being, it, it's got to be a good feeling as a coach knowing, you know, the receiving core around him when you have Tylen Wallace, and then even in your backfield with Chuba Hubbard, they're either either guy's going to be coming in with good support around him. Sure, that, and that's what I was talking about. We've got some guys that can move the ball and score points. We need to be able to effectively get the ball to those guys and do it the right way within our system. It's kind of unusual for a coach like you have taking so much responsibility about kind of the failures of last year. Is that have you ever done that before? Have you ever felt that way before in first season? No, uh, I, I'm fairly critical of myself in the off season and uh, in our staff. So it was just different this year. When I look back, I just felt like that I didn't do a good job. And, um, little thing here, little thing there. Before you know it, it potentially can get out of hand. And, we became an undisciplined football team. We weren't very tough. And those were things that I should be able to control as a head coach. I, as a word, I don't lose a lot, but that is my job. And so I'll try to do much better this year. What kind of feedback or what you, maybe what kind of response in the spring would you get from players? Um, when I'm sure you talked to them about this was a problem last year and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to go back to what I've been in the past in regard to coaching you guys up. The discussions I have with them are, are the overall organization, myself, the staff, the players, everything in general, and um, how can we get better each year, even the years we won 12 games. What can we do to get better? So I'm always very upfront with them about the way we feel about them as a team or individually, and the way that I felt about our staff or myself. And I, I think that's the best way. And so we have those discussions. And um, you would have to ask them, but I would guess they would be appreciative of upfront transparency and honesty. Um, I think that's the best way in an organization that's got roughly 200 people in it. Oftentimes when a new offensive coordinator comes in, they're bringing their offensive system. But here, it's more you know him adjusting to, to you guys. Does that speed up kind of his acclimation that, or for the whole team? We've been fortunate, both Mike and, and uh, Sean, come in and, and learn our system. And our, we're bright young coaches that uh, have a good mind for the game, so they, they learn real quickly. Um, but it's, it's so much much easier for one guy to learn a system than 60 players and nine other coaches for the most part. So um, he's done very well, and he's worked hard at it. Those guys um, that get to the level that they are, and, and Sean is, they, they put a lot of time in it, and the game's important to them. So, in most cases, they're quick large. Coach, I want to ask about three Southern Oklahoma guys, Jacob Farrell, Baron Odom, who's been with you, and then a transfer, uh, Michael Cooper, just their progress, the three of those guys? Well, they're doing well. They're, you know, in the program and, and, uh, and young, but, uh, guys that have bought into the system and our culture uh, and, and are working hard and, and trying to get better each day and um, guys that are that are putting a lot of time and effort in trying to get on the field. Coach and Cody Walker signs filling in for his brother Cole who just graduated. What can you tell us about him? Well he just got here so I haven't really seen him because they've been here five weeks or so and, and uh, as coaches we're not around them even watching in the off season so I know that his numbers were really good. Uh, his testing numbers and he's, he's working hard. Uh, he's got a great frame. We're guessing could potentially put on 50 pounds. Uh, and we're excited to have him. What do you expect him from Tylen this next season? He had such a great year last year, but I'm sure lots of people are going to have their eyes on him going into each week. we got to do a good job of uh, moving him around a little bit. It's not something we do a lot with our wideouts because of the speed we play. Most of our guys line up in the same spot every time. Um, we have moved some guys around. We moved uh, Blackman around. We moved James around. So uh, we need to we need to adjust his alignment times. But he's a great young man. He's very humble. He's an extremely hard worker. Um, regardless, he's gonna 
he's going to have a good year. But as a coaching staff, we need to try to find ways to help the defense from taking him out of the game and giving up a certain area of the field. Hey, Mike, to follow up on Nathan's question about bringing in a coordinator that learns your system, that's easier for you guys, but lots of times a good coordinator candidate wants to bring their stuff in. Most of the time. Yeah, when did you realize you'd maybe hit on a formula of hiring a guy and having him adapt to you that could work, whereas lots of times it, it doesn't work that way in most places? Uh, we went through a, 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 a verbal terminology transition when Dana came in because it was so much different than what we had done before. And I, I wasn't, it, it worked out well for us. We had really good players. Um, not to say that the system didn't do it, but we still had really, really key guys in key places. And there was some transition for other players, and I wasn't real comfortable with it. So from that point moving forward, I just said, we're gonna, we're gonna keep our language the same, and then the guy coming in needs to learn our system. It, it reduces your pool of candidates, because probably 75% of the guys don't have any interest in learning a new system. The fact that you've gone lower division to find, I mean, obviously Mike worked out great, early returns on Sean are great. Is that, I mean, while it might reduce your number of D1 potential coordinator candidates, those other divisions, has that opened up a new avenue for you, feel, you feel like? Um, you, know, you know, Mike was, uh, uh, Yersich was, in some people's opinion, a risk coming from uh, Shippensburg. Sean wasn't as hidden as Mike was. Um, he had some things going on and some pretty good potential. Uh, the difference being that uh, we, I guess myself, I look for, for young, uh, enthusiastic, up-and-coming coaches to lead and, and have a lot of energy and have a dynamic approach to the game and offense and maybe add some things that we don't know. And that's how I ended up with, well, Mike really, and then especially Sean. So uh, the transition with him has been a little quicker than Mike's, just based on um, his experience. Uh, he was at least recruiting nationally to where Mike was not really recruiting nationally. So there was a considerable difference in that area. What are your thoughts on Les Miles being back in the, back in the conference? I, I think that the, the athletic directors in this league did a nice job. We've got guys, that, uh, good coaches, good quality people in our, in our conference that, that we have good relationships with. That's one advantage we have in the Big 12. Our coaches get along. We're able to come together at meetings in the spring and sit down and discuss and, and try to make the best decision for the players and for the league. And I think Les will be fine. And it'll be entertaining for the league. There's always something out there he has going on. Follow up, uh, what, what kind of leadership is Johnny Wilson going to do? Oh, wow. Johnny's a good, tough, hard-nosed, old-school um, throwback player. He likes to play football, and he likes uh, heavy metal music, and uh, he's kind of a throwback guy to the 80s. Do you see less as an uh, acting? I, I, you know, I haven't seen any of his stuff. Uh, I didn't see that, and I haven't seen any, any of his YouTube stuff. Um, uh, I haven't got that desperate. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have a lot of time to watch TV, but no, I have not watched any of his acting. When you're done coaching, any chance to take acting lessons? No, I'm not. So I'm gonna. I'll be on a farm. I'll be farming. That's what I do. How much of your time does that take? Farming. Uh -huh. Well, I either coach or watch my kids play games or farm. I was on a tractor five hours yesterday. That's pretty much what I do. I'm, 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 uh, I don't know if I'm any good at it, but I like to do it. How did that start up? Well, I moved on a ranch and, uh, and I have a farm, and so I either had to you know, start raising animals for sale or, or start growing Bermuda hay, so I chose Bermuda hay. I'm actually raising a few animals now, but the hay's a little easier than dealing with all the animals. <laughs> hey, Coach, uh, I'm sorry. I have, to, I have to write about Sam Ellinger. Um, could you tell me maybe the progress that you saw from him from, like, the, the freshman year to a sophomore year and what kind of quarterback do you think he is? Which is what most guys, the, the progress they make, he's really developed. Um, when they're young, they make some mistakes. Uh, they kind of grow out of them. I thought that he really improved in the latter part of the season. When we played him, um, he was really coming on as a player. And then, I don't know, 
uh, someone plays somebody late and then played well in the bowl game. Um, and you know, Sam's, I don't know, 230 pounds now maybe. He's pretty big. So he's been a physical player for him. And, and, um, another guy in this league has played really well at that position. You've, uh, you've recruited some four and five star guys during your tenure. Not many. And that leads me to my question about Spencer. I mean, he's a guy that a Gatorade Player of the Year in Texas, obviously Texas high school football being what it is. Um, how how did he handle you know sitting last year? How did he handle being one of those guys coming out of high school and then having to you know sort of go through what he went through in the last 12? I, I think months? I think uh, much better than what maybe the public's perception was. I'm not saying that all players don't want to play as a freshman. But I think that uh, they also get some realistic uh, feeling for if, how far along they are and if they're ready. And so I think that he was okay with the development and learning and the different things that uh, his change in his body. Uh, so he was good, you know. Um, I think there's always times they want to play, but overall I thought he, he did a nice job. What kind of things did he do to like, show you that he was okay, or what did you notice that told you? Oh, I don't know anything specifically. Um, he was with um, our varsity most of the time. He was getting a few reps and, and getting some throws and individual periods. And, um, I thought during the games and on Sundays when we were reviewing the games, he was pretty attentive. And you mentioned changing his body. What specific things did he work on? All those guys, uh, they cut body fat and add weight. You know, they, they put muscle on. And muscle obviously weighs more than fat. And, they trim up and just kind of grow and develop. He's done the same. Mike, what were your thoughts on uh, Alan Bowman last year when you guys uh, played against Texas Tech, and uh, what do you think of him as a quarterback? Uh, I mean, he, he's uh, you know I didn't didn't obviously didn't see a lot on him, um, but um, seemed to do well at times. I haven't studied him uh, enough to really give uh, an accurate description of uh, of that. I hadn't had to do that yet. But uh, obviously, he got a chance to play in this league. Is some of what you get to see out of Jerry Spencer in a game help that, seeing them play actually in a game? What's that? Is some of what you want to see out of Jerry Spencer in a game help that, seeing them play in a game? Uh, sure. It, you know, it, whoever plays, uh, the way they play is very important. So we try to simulate and practice some scrimmages and such. Extremely difficult. Crowd's not involved. Uh, you can say there's pressure, but not really. So, um, you know, the one issue that, that we have that there's not a solution for is that um, the guys that are competing for this job have never played Oklahoma State. And that's not going to go away. There's no solution. We just got to go play. Are you any more open to playing with some quarterbacks than you have been in the past? We've never really talked about doing it a lot, but. Um, if, it, if it fell in our laps, then that's what we would do. If, uh, if we get to a point a month from now and, and we feel like that both of them are playing well enough to play in the game, or if um, neither one of them have taken the reins and you play both guys. You've played, uh, you've had two guys, you've used JW when he was around, but you had quarterbacks with kind of different skill sets. I mean, I know JW could throw, but he was more that guy you put down on the goal line and right. gave him the ball. From the looks of things, Drew and Spencer are somewhat similar in skill set. Does that change how you could potentially use two guys? Well, this would be the only other time that we had two guys playing was early with Chelf and JW. They were kind of similar. And then one of them got injured and the other one was injured. I don't remember who was first. But this would be the first time we really potentially could play two guys that are similar if it were to fall that way. So how did – have you – Obviously, you thought a little bit about playing both guys. We thought how you would play both. Would it be a quarter, a quarter? Haven't. Okay. Um, you know, did, did, really don't want to burn a lot of brain cells on that until it's presented to okay. me. I have yeah. not thought about that because okay. um, that's another really issue you have to deal with when you're playing two guys. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, so, uh, you mentioned one having to separate themselves, and they haven't done that yet. What would you want to see at the pitch ball, and what would separate them? Um, for us, they have to be able to orchestrate and run our system, uh, do it uh, uh, 
in a manner that allows the players to touch the ball, that can give us the best chance to score points, so we have to protect the ball. Is there anything that separates either one in terms of, do you want to see something out of Spencer versus something out of Drew? That yeah, it does. Not really. Just overall production. Mike Anderson tweeted out just a little Do you anticipate much of a change as far as maybe the league's identity or the style of play that you guys um, Not a lot. I mean, just going off what you see. I mean, uh, West Virginia is uh, they're throwing it, and, and Neil throws it. Um, they take. They take. Same thing with Matt. Utah State was um, doing a lot of three down and, and throwing it. Same thing as Tech was doing. Um, there's some similarities to what North Dakota State was doing and Coach Schneider was doing. Uh, Kansas would be the team. <clears throat> if Coach Miles is going to um, play with a fullback and a tight end, there would be a, a change there compared to what Kansas did. So, not a lot. For the most part, it'll be pretty similar. Mike Sanderson tweeted out a few weeks ago that he got in a car accident. It seemed to be like off his feet. How did you find out about that news? Who's that? Oh, I didn't. I hadn't heard it. I did not know. That's news to me. <laughs> I just know he's here and and he's he's working out. I did not know any of that. He's in good shape. Um, I, I'm assuming. I know he's here and in school and working out. How are you feeling going into this?